Right, questions to the cabinet. Well, you already are, Councillor. Uh, question 12. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong question. Give us a second. Well, yes, I realise, I remember it. Um, uh, the leader, of course, in his uh, answer to question one, um, answered this. Um, and I do think, um, I will just add that I do think that if I um, micromanage the department as um, his question suggests, I would be criticised. We all in this council are corporate parents, as has, has been emphasised this evening. And while I have every confidence that all members are going to help to correct the situation, um, I do believe we all need to take responsibility. Madam Mayor. Councillor Belton. I think it's the first time in about 40 years that I've ever been accused of not opposing enough, um, which uh, I note that comment, uh, Councillor Tracy. Um, okay, understood where you are. Can you at least agree that you'll uh, consider the Ofsted report and uh, what we do about it in the most uh, transparent and open culture across the committee? and therefore at least accept one of our amendments. I'm not sure what amendment he's talking about. If he's talking about in commission... Can I help? Yes, Can please. I help? It's B2 in our amendment that the uh, uh, original amendment will establish a more transparent and open culture across the count. Um, I think we've already voted that, that down in the previous okay. vote. But I do certainly um, expect that our committees, and particularly the subcommittee, will be very open and very transparent. Um, and I look forward to Councillor Belton's help with that. Yes, can I suggest to her that, uh, that she needs to consider... Can you do it quite quickly? Because it's not really a supplementary, is it? Well, it is a supplementary. It's You've a already supplementary. had one. No, I'm having a, my second supplement. I'm moment. terribly sorry, Councillor Belton. Please, off you go. Um, and the fact that I'm hesitating in getting the words right, I apologise for, so it's a bit slow. Um, can I suggest that she needs to rethink the significance which she places on visits, which some of us find a little bit like the Queen, think, you know, I refer to Councillor Trace as the Queen of the committee, and she thinks everything smells of new paint. And that actually there might be other things apart from visits. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, thank the council for a supplementary. Um, there are other things as, apart from visits, but I do, and I have a, um, a reputation for doing an awful lot of visiting. I speak to all the young... You said you were good, but miss the point. I, I, I speak to all the children in care and the care leavers, and I do actually believe that I probably hold information that other councillors ought to share. Um, and I think that to actually really get to grips with this department and to understand some of the needs and the pressures, all councillors need to do a certain amount of visiting. Councillor Grimston. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, would the Cabinet member, firstly, uh, 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 be prepared to accept my uh, warm uh, uh, thanks for, for the words she made towards the end of her speech in terms of recognising that member development and, and more scrutiny is necessary? Can I just ask her, can she guarantee to the Council that she is speaking for the single united voice of the Cabinet, as indeed uh, Cabinet responsibility would suggest? Um, I think that's a very cheeky third supplementary. Um, and also, um, no, I made the speech and I was uh, speaking in my own right. I, I am not in a position to speak for my colleagues because I don't visit other committees, so I have no idea how members challenge them. But I certainly will be expecting my members to be more challenging. Uh, question 13. Uh, question 13 to the Cabinet Member for Housing. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Lescott for his uh, question. I, I did attend. The, the Queen sadly wasn't able to make it on this particular occasion. Um, I, I will say, actually, this was the, um, sort of the first major 
initiative of, of the, uh, the new mo moves in the mobility scheme. Uh, and obviously having a sort of a road show like this is always a bit of a lottery because you never know whether anybody is actually going to turn up or not. So I did arrive with a certain amount of trepidation. Uh, but I'm pleased to say that when I, I got there, I think it was about quarter to six, so I'd been going for about an hour and a half or so, uh, the room was actually full. All the members of staff were speaking to residents. And the figures are, are here that uh, uh, roughly two-thirds of those who came uh, have expressed a positive interest in, in downsizing. Um, obviously, uh, I, I don't imagine that they all will, ultimately, but uh, nevertheless, I think this is a very good start indeed, uh, and I hope it's something that we will continue into the future. Supplementary. Councillor Lescott. Thank you uh, for that very comprehensive answer, both written and uh, what you've just said. Uh, it sounds like uh, quite a success, and I hope you'll congratulate the officers for implementing the scheme. Uh, I wonder, can you tell us roughly how many council tenants are uh, living in homes larger than they need? And can you also tell us uh, if he is aware of similar schemes elsewhere? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Lescott for his supplementary question. Uh, I don't actually have the uh, exact figures uh, of those looking to uh, downsize, but I can certainly find them f uh, and let him know. Uh, what I can say is that the, uh, it, it's widely uh, held uh, view that the numbers of uh, people who are living in accommodation that's too large for them uh, is roughly equivalent to the numbers of people who are living in accommodation that's too small for them. So clearly, the more we can do to encourage people, uh, and particularly, I think, older people, uh, who often tend to be uh, occupying, occupying the larger properties because oops, their families have moved away. Uh, if we can encourage them to downsize, um, that will free up uh, family-sized accommodation, and that's part of the uh, idea behind the scheme. Um, we do uh, offer uh, incentives uh, to uh, people to, uh, uh, to, to give up uh, bedrooms, and I think that is a fairly common uh, thing across, uh, across most councils. Uh, and this new team will also be assisting uh, tenants to move with all the practical arrangements, uh, you know, the physical removal uh, costs and arrangements for moving carpets and curtains, all that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know whether other councils do that. I suspect some do and, and some don't. Um, as regards to actually positively going out to uh, encourage people to move, I think this is a new initiative as far as we're concerned. I've not heard of any other authorities doing it, but they, they indeed they uh, may well be, and, and I'd be interested to hear if any uh, uh, Councillor Grimston I know moves, uh, moves in circles uh, wider than I do. Uh, he, he may uh, be able to tell us about any, any councils that have uh, initiatives on that, and we're all uh, very pleased to hear about them. But uh, certainly I think this has proved that by actually encouraging people uh, to come along and talk about it and, and by uh, actively helping them uh, and supporting them, uh, it is paying dividends. Question 14. Question 14 to the Cabinet Member. Uh, I thank Councillor Carpenter for his question. Um, you, there's obviously a very detailed uh, response. Um, I, I think I failed to get to the nub as to why he asked this question. I'm not quite sure um, what the intention was behind it. But I would like to state that um, in children's services, particularly in placements, you can't have a fixed budget. You can have an estimate of what you um, hope it's going to cost and how many children you hope might uh, 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 need the provision. But we've never um, had to stick to rigidity. If the child needs a placement and it's an expensive placement, we've always paid it. Hence um, the overspend. Supplementary? Uh, perhaps I can Carpenter. elucidate. Um, I only discovered this buried in, a, in the finance and corporate resources paper in February. Uh, I used to be a finance director. If you're going to do anything about budget overspend, you need to do it after six months, not six weeks, but at the end of, end of the, the year. And it's a very significant overspend. There may be very good reasons for it, but my view is that members need to... Be, have it drawn to their attention at the earliest, not the latest, possible opportunity. So would, in the spirit of Nolan openness, which we're all required to follow, the Cabinet member ensure in future that when there are such significant overspends, they are brought to the attention of members early rather than late? Um, I thank the Councillor um, for the supplementary. Actually, um, the Committee has been made aware of these certainly um, over the last two years because it's been a growing problem um, and I'll refer you to the overspend on the transport, the SCN transport. Um, we've had two papers on how we could possibly address it and how we believe as um, a council that we have 
a certain responsibility to um, train our um, youngsters that at the moment take advantage of the um, SEN transport to become more independent with their travel. Um, and so we have a special contract that um, has a buddying system to accompany them and to train them and to teach them. And the, com the committee is well aware that that takes time um, and it, it, it's, it's quite an innovative way of dealing with it. Um, but it does take time to get these uh, youngsters and the families uh, competent in uh, travelling and therefore not needing the SEN transport. We have a statutory duty to provide it so if the parents actually decide they want to use it, so be it. And that's why there's this uh, site conflict. Um, but we, it isn't that we didn't know about it or that we haven't been trying to do things to um, improve the situation. Commentary, Madam Mayor. Councillor Belton. Would Councillor Tracy accept that actually the situation is getting worse? Councillor Carpenter may not know, but I've been pursuing the same point for at least as long as you've been on the council, Councillor Tracy. And now, of course, with fewer committee meetings and fewer cycles, it's going to get more and more difficult for it to happen. Um, thank the council for the supplementary. Um, I certainly would accept that um, the situation appears to be getting worse. And actually, I think it is more to do with the fact that um, the budget is the traditional budget and no account has been taken for the fact that there has been a tremendous increase in the number of youngsters um, now born and using our schools within the borough and the proportion of SEN pupils within that cohort of course has similarly increased and no account has been taken of that in the budget. Um, the finance director is now well aware of my views on this. Thank you very much. Question 16. 15, are we on? 15. Apologies, I'm trying to race through now. Qu uh, question, question 15, 15 please. <clears throat> Thank you. I will be answering for Councillor Madden, who um, is, in or is out of hospital now, but recovering from a small operation. Um, I thank the councillor for her question. My, the first thing I would say is I was struck by, can councillors be confident that? And I would hope they could be as uh, they may be satisfying themselves that we have a very robust monitoring system and if they have any doubts about this they should be speaking to and challenging officers uh, particularly those on the adult uh, services over, um, overview and scrutiny committee after all that's what we're elected to do scrutinize so that is actually what we must do um, contract monitoring activity and the hierarchy of actions uh, um, if a provider begins to fall for whatever reason are set out in the answer so I'm not going to repeat them here with the support we offer care homes they can improve and if regular monitoring picks up slippage then we do have systems that will bring it back into place there have been recent examples such as um, the York Road uh, dementia care home where of course it has gone too far but in that instance that, that from what I understand the council moved in very very quickly with safeguarding and, and to make sure the 17 remaining residents were moved out without too um, much undue disruption to their care packages. I think it's worth reminding council um, because we've got a couple of questions on this tonight that we're talking about a very vulnerable cohort and it is right that officers both challenge and support care homes. You cannot just go around moving old people out because something isn't working quite right one week. Um, and nor is there a fail-safe way of guaranteeing standards. The tender process, which uh, members are making quite a lot of, can of course be used to benchmark a care home at the point of improvement. But, um, and it gains them a place on the framework. But from there on in, it is down to our, our officers and the robust monitoring that they put in place that ensures our residents are safe. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. I thank the stand-in cabinet member for a very good answer. <laughs> of course, all of us councillors from all three sides have a role to play. We've all got our ears to, a ground, to the ground and occasionally we will be the first to know when our most vulnerable residents are having problems as Councillor Osborne was telling us earlier. Does the Chief Whip agree on behalf of the Cabinet member that it would be useful if, as well as passing on complaints to Council officers, 
they copied in the cabinet member, the chairman and the opposition speaker of the Adult Social Services Overview and Scrutiny Committee. I thank the councillor for her supplemental. Yes, actually, I, I think it would be a brilliant idea. I think that the more information we share, the better we're able to protect vulnerable residents. Councillor Thomas. Thank you. Um, does the uh, Chief Whip, uh, I'm sure the Chief Whip does agree with me actually that uh, the debate we've been having uh, about the Ofsted report uh, underlines the importance of ensuring that we, all of us as members, have a detailed grip on the standards to which our services are, uh, are provided. Would it then surprise her uh, to um, uh, learn that uh, in the contract documentation presented to the Overview and Scrutiny Committee for the Home Care Service, there was in fact no information presented on KPIs at all, and we've heard a lot about the importance of KPIs tonight. Does she think that's acceptable? And can she tell me what changes have been made uh, to the quality requirements uh, contained in the Home Care contract since it went to the committee uh, in order to ensure quality? And will she commit to consulting with the OSC uh, on uh, those changes, if there have been any, uh, prior to the contract actually going out to tender? I thank the councillor for his question. Um, I can't really commit for anything on behalf of Councillor Madden, who is not here tonight. Um, if you have concerns about these things, it's exactly what I was saying in my first paragraph. Your first point of call is, is to the chairman of the committee and to the officers to challenge and ask for what you want in there. And if you don't think it's robust enough, come forward and say so. You just have, go for it with the officers. Question 16. Question 16 to the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services. Um, I thank Councillor Pritchard for her uh, question. And I hope she understands now what the difference between the two uh, numbers were. But we'll see presumably with a supplementary. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, supplementary, please. Um, yeah, I do, I do understand now. However, um, what I would like to say is I actually think the uh, planning committee were misled because this wasn't handled clearly in planning. And if people would like to check, planning meetings are recorded and there'll be a detailed question from me about this. So I'd like to say I don't think this addresses the question about miscommunication Clearly, this was an opportunity, maybe, to have taken... Councillor Critchard, is there a question here? Yes. Right. It was an opportunity to take on extra places. Please, could the Cabinet member answer more clearly about what happened in the communication between planning, who clearly thought at the time of planning committee that this did allow it, and education, who clearly didn't think that? Um... I thank uh, the Councillor for the supplementary. She is quite right. There was an absolute failure of communication on this particular item, um, and there was an assumption that um, uh, the Children's Services Department knew all about it. However, the reason, um, as far as the places are concerned, um, it's the government that are funding the places, and they are funding the new build, and they had looked at the... Um, footprint and decided that there wasn't room for any expansion. So even if we had known beforehand, and even if we had said we think we want extra places, um, it wouldn't have been forthcoming. But I have to agree with you, there was a complete breakdown in communication on this one. Question 17 to the Cabinet member. Um, well, I particularly thank uh, Councillor Hampton um, for this question. And um, uh, the leader, of course, made a point about this um, earlier, um, that it's not the whole of Children's Services Department that um, has got problems or issues. The educational side of it is second to none. And um, I think, as he alluded to, um, we've had, I think it's four... Ofsted reports, which are all embargoed at the moment over the last week, um, all which have been very pleasing, and um, I shall be very happy to come to the next council meeting and answer questions about those. Um, so I particularly welcome um, 
this paper. Um, there are so many good things that happen in the education department and so many wonderful achievements. Um, and um, one of them that I'm not sure is here is the enormous amount, which is now over 60, I think it's 66% of our youngsters um, in Wandsworth are going to university, and that is terrific news. Supplemental. Um, can I please ask the Cabinet member what thought has been given to IT provision, particularly in the light of all the things that we've talked about in many industries, including my own, in order to make sure that everything is effectively working? You have computer systems to flag up when you are not getting something. I wonder if she could uh, answer that. I'm not too sure at what level the councillor is asking that question, whether she's asking from a departmental point of view with all the information and uh, um, research unit and the sort of information they get, um, or whether she's asking on a school's um, basis, whether schools will all have been um, given a budget to make sure that their IT is um, totally up to date. Um, one of the successes of the education department and the schools has indeed been their use of... Um, IT and the statistics to be able to see trends, compare with other um, like schools across the borough. Um, in every single area we compare, whether it's on a subject, whether it's on finances, or whatever else. And it is indeed one of the strengths. Um, but I'm not sure whether you're asking me the question on a departmental basis or on a school basis. Um, sorry, I didn't make that clear. Um, I think all together, really, in coordination, I think that um, so often we talk about it in finance as well. Is, is this a clarification or another question? A bit of both. Can we just have a clarification? Clarification. We'll put it as clarification. Um, we could put our IT provision in both of the things that I'm talking about in school. I think that's quite clear now. Um, we could use it to better purpose. That was, it. That was the last question. Um, I've just been advised that the best answer to this question is I will discuss it afterwards with the <laughs> councillor. Thank you, councillors. That's the end of time for questions to the Cabinet um, to members.